Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. It's about time for another possibly final instalment in the Solid State Tesla Coil video series where I'm going to build an audio modulator for that Tesla Coil which is going to be based on this circuit that you can see right here. Now, so far with the Tesla Coil we've had pretty good success. We went from this to this 170 volts and finally this so now I think it's time for this thing to speak for itself. So, this is the circuit that's going to help it do that. Well, this is what I'm going to base my interrupter on. So, anyway, as you can see, I've drawn all over it and things because, you know, I'm making changes to it and that, but um, just ignore that for now. Okay, so the audio comes in here, which is this little filter circuit here which filters out the RF and it also filters out the low frequencies from the audio because it's only really going to you're only going to really hear the high frequencies from the tester coil anyway so I think we could get away with 10 nanofarads and it's still going to work good so we've got a 3 op amp solution right here so we've got one here that just amplifies the signal with a variable gain set by this potentiometer here then we've got this one here which tells if this one is clipping which is set to trigger at a set level and then we got this one here that turns the incoming signal into a square wave so it's pulses of on and off and the sensitivity of that is set by this potentiometer here and then that goes into this which amplifies it a little bit and then sends it into the LED of an optocoupler and the other side of the optocoupler is connected to the enable pin on the gate driver chips I think this is a little bit overboard, this circuit, so I'm going to simplify it a bit. For one thing, this guy has used three 741 op amps, and we can really, in this modern age of chips where you have two or more op amps in the same chip, we can just discard of a 741, and um, so I'm going to use an LM324 instead, which is four op amps in the same chip. So one of them will go unused, but, you know, who cares about that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this part up and then I'm just going to connect an LED here to see if it's doing anything and if it works we'll see where we go from there. Right. Okay so here is the interrupter so far built up on the breadboard so I can test it. As you can see I'm using the LM324 quad op amp and for the moment I'm just going to use an LED to indicate that it's actually doing anything and I've got it connected up to my tape recorder and this microphone so this microphone is connected up to the input on this cassette deck and then I've got the output of the cassette deck connected up to this so let's adjust the input gain and see if the clip LED comes on at some point it should start flushing while I'm talking and I'm turning this up oh there we go seems to be responding now there we go Okay, so that's the clip LED, so that seems to be working. So I'll just turn that down a little bit. I'll turn up the comparator. So this LED starts flashing when I'm talking, and that will indicate that this is producing output. So anytime now, that should come on. Okay, alright, there we go. So as you can see, um, when I talk into this microphone, or it gets any input source. You can see that little LED is flashing there. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a really, really bright LED. Well, that worked, so what I'm gonna do now is, because it didn't seem to have any trouble lighting up the LED, I'm just going to completely omit this part from the circuit. I don't really think it's needed. And I'm just gonna connect this straight up to the LED in the optocoupler, obviously through a resistor I'm going to use a 1K resistor, like I was using with the LEDs, and I'm pretty sure that's going to work. Okay, well, since this chip did such a good job with powering up an LED, I thought to myself, well, surely it's not going to have any trouble powering the LED in an octocoupler, right? Turns out, for once, I was right about something. Yes, I actually was right about something. 
So here you can see the optocoupler that is going to be in the Tesla coil circuit itself. And as you can see, when I speak, the little light comes on. And that LED is being powered from this battery going through the optocoupler. And as you can see, it has no trouble at all. The LED is nice, still nice and bright. I'm just monitoring the input voltage on my multimeter. We're at about 12 volts. I know it says 23 volts, but that's because I'm measuring across both voltage rails. And the LED doesn't really get dim if I lower the voltage. See, it's still nice and bright. In fact, I'm going to lower the voltage and keep going burr. Burr. The LED doesn't really start getting dim until we get to about 9 volts. But below 9 volts is where it starts getting dim and the circuit stops working properly. So let's go back up to 12 volts. Let's just get that. Yeah. I mean, this circuit is supposed to be powered on 15 volts, but you know, 12 volts works just as good. So, anyway, this looks like a successful circuit, so the next thing to do is make the necessary changes to my Tesla coil circuit, and then we'll see if we can get audio modulation. Okay, well, everything seems to be working so far. At the moment, I've just got the battery connected to the optocoupler, so it's in constant wave at the moment, but just powering it on 70 volts. Good. There we go. Surprising it's not interfering with the camera, but um, I think for audio modulation, um, we don't really need any more power than that because, you know. Right, well, this is the moment of truth. I've got my mini disc player playing something, and that's going into the audio modulator circuits, which is powered up. And putting its audio modulatory goodness into the control circuitry, so I'll just plug that in. Also, I'm going to do this on just 30 volts to start with. 30 volts supply to start with, just to make sure that nothing's going to blow. Alright, so I'll turn the power on, and we should hear audio coming out of that. And I hear nothing. Oh, we just need a little bit more. There it is. Don't know what that is. All right, let's go and play some 8-bit music because let's face it when anybody says when anybody mentions 8-bit they think NES and that's it even though there were other 8-bit systems such as the Sega Master System and the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum nope the NES was the only 8-bit system that ever existed so let's play some Mega Man Well, you know I have to do this. Now, where do I put my screwdriver? Alright, let's try another track. This is probably playing hell with the microphone. ZX Spectrum! Play something that's truly one bit. Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders.
All right, that's enough of that. Weird thing is, when I touch the comparative control, it actually gets a little bit clearer. But uh, I'm not sure what that's all about. All right, so that was at uh, 30 volts. Now let's try this on 70 volts, which is going to be about 100 volts when it gets rectified and sent into there. Okay, we're going to have to go again because um, even though I was using my microphone here, which is that microphone there, most of the output you could hear was actually the interference between the coil and the microphone, so uh, you weren't actually hearing the actual output from the coil, although you were hearing some of it. But And now let's hear some Tesla music again at 70. tell you something that's pretty loud, I'm going to say it's a 100% success. Alright, and lastly, for those of you interested, of course, as always, here are the schematics. Now, firstly, the, um, there are a couple of points I'd like to go over, like, um, for instance, these two capacitors here aren't the actual capacitors I used, but I just put those in because they're the more ideal type of capacitor and of course they should be film capacitors. I know I use microwave capacitors but that's because that was the closest thing I have to what I actually need so you know it might even work better with the film capacitors I'm not absolutely sure about that but yeah I did make a little mess up with the gate drive transformer there so that's why I've stuck a bit of paper over it and redrawn it the, pro the way it should be which is how it is right there. I mean I forgot to put in the 5 ohm resistors which was kind of stupid of me. Sorry that this bit here is a bit hard to read. I know it's all kind of messy, but um, I've lost the file that's got all the symbols that I drew, so I cannot draw my diagrams on the computer anymore until I draw some new versions of those symbols and then uh, use those, and I'm just too lazy to do that, so I just draw it out on paper. But anyway, you can, you can pretty much make it out. Another thing I should mention is, I know this is 100 volt here, but that's the voltage rating that the capacitor should have, not the voltage that should go into these chips. So, got a good look at that? Okay. Here is the modulator circuit. My version of the modulator circuit. And as you can see, it's a lot more simpler than that other modulator, and it works absolutely wonderfully as you heard when I played some 8-bit music through it, because, well, you know, if you build an audio modulated Tesla coil, you've got to play 8-bit music through it. It's the law. Well, actually, I know the real reason a lot of people play 8-bit music through a Tesla coil. It's because those kind of waveforms get through more easy and don't get distorted so much, but, you know. And I went that extra mile and even played some 1-bit music through it, because I'm that awesome. So anyway, that's about it for the videos on the Tesla coil. I mean, this isn't the end of the high voltage videos, but the thing is, you're probably all getting sick of the, this series anyway, so that's why I've been kind of trying to put other videos in between each video on this thing, because you know, I'm trying to space it out a bit, so it's not just one video after another video after another video on the same thing, you know, trying to spread things out a little bit, so now I've got this done, I'm going to get on with the Super Hat Radio, and, uh, actually that's not as complicated as I thought it would be, because I thought it was going to have to do lots and lots of stages, lots and lots of trial and error, but I've found a circuit. I found several circuits, including one by RadioFun232, fellow YouTuber, who's made a shortwave superhet radio with provisions for a single sideband oscillator as well, so that's that's going to be coming up within the next few videos or so. That is when I can get some good IF coils, and yeah, there's going to be some more high voltage videos involving flybacks and high voltage transformers and 
Maybe even I'll try to audio modulate a ZVS flyback driver. But anyway, that's that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.